women, all the ladies who celebrated Women's Day today here at the church and those who are worshiping by way of Facebook and YouTube. This song is for you too. Amen. Of course, we dedicate this song to you entitled Jesus on the Main Line. Amen.
God and to the Spirit of Christ this morning and to our members and friends and visitors and all that are assembled here, to the pulpit guests this morning, and the beautiful women in red. I greet you. I greet you in the precious and the most adorable name of Jesus the Christ. And to the men in red as well. conference uh, as we close out today and we have with us um, for the morning worship Mr. Ames Brown of the 11 Oaks Baptist Church. Amen. Amen. We know that there's a word. Amen. Uh, on the 23rd we will have our Thanksgiving meals here and they will be uh, prepared here and delivered to the different areas. If you know of anyone that uh, so desires a fresh cooked meal on that day, deliver it to their doorstep if possible. Uh, see Sister Terry over here in the back. Give her your address, phone number, and she'll see that uh, she'll have the distribution going on through the members of the church uh, to deliver them. So we thank them for their energy and working to see that these uh, different ministries continue to pour out to the neighboring areas. Amen. Thanksgiving service with our, our pastor will be at the, he will be speaking at the Christian Tabernacle Church over on High Street on Thanksgiving morning uh, with, um, I, we didn't get who the pastor is over there. Excuse me? The pastor over at that church. Uh, Bishop Hicks. Bishop Hicks. So pastor will be over there at 10 a.m. on Thanksgiving morning. Also, our final quarter of the meeting will be on the 27th of December here at the church, beginning probably at 7 p.m. Last day to sign up for the Wakanda Minish, a movie that uh, we've been so blessed to be a part of through our pastor and first lady, uh, is today. They're going to take up the sheet today if your name is not on there, so uh, it's been there for last week and this week, so that tell them that you know he has the number that they need to order the tickets. So uh, be aware of that I believe as you go through the store right to the left, yeah. it's there on the po uh, podium. Uh, the coat and shoe drive, um, we're gonna take a minute and listen to Sister Sarita in just a second, but I'll uh, take care of this right now. Uh, we ask that you continue to be in prayer for our, uh, those that may be sick among us, not feeling well, nasally, and all those things. Mm -hmm. Just keep them in prayer. Also, the Andersons, uh, there in, uh, we continue to pray for them each uh, Sunday and, and along the way, even during the weekdays. So, Reverend Anderson and Sister Obina Anderson, mm -hmm. we, we love them and we continue to lift them up. Mm -hmm. In sympathy, we ask your uh, prayers for the Thorpe family. Uh, slash Blaine. Sister Irene passed away on last on um, Friday evening, I believe it was. Uh, and so uh, she's a member of the St. Peter's Church over here on 226. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. there's that Blaine family up in prayer. November birthday, Stephen Journeyman is celebrated. His brother mm -hmm. has to come. Yeah. And then they can pop it. So all of our men in red are uh, celebrating the birthday. So we praise God and thank and pray that they will be blessed in that. Yeah. Uh, Saria, you can come on here, sweetheart. And um, after that, we will do one other thing. And then we'll, I'll take my seat.
Acknowledge our ladies from different area churches that have given of their time today to come and be a part Amen. of the service. Uh, you're in our house and we want you to feel welcome. Amen. So we're going to give way at this time. If all of you will stand and then you can follow uh, one another as you bring us greetings from your area.
go like this. All right. First, give honor to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Um, Y'all know what time it is. Amen. So, you know, I've heard folks say, we don't want that jingle. We like that soft stuff. <laughs> Come on and give to the Lord what he's given to you. Amen.
Memorial Baptist Church, happy Women's Day. Amen. 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 Uh, Pastor Peter, I told uh, people, the congregation of my church, I said, if the women leave, I'm going right behind them. <laughs> <laughs> for the matter is, if it won't for the women, I don't know where our churches will be today. Amen. Uh, Amen. We thank God for your women. Amen. May God continue to bless you. It gives me great pleasure and great honor to introduce uh, this woman that's behind me. Uh, she's been my partner for over 10 years. Amen. Uh, the Lord has blessed us. We have two kids and Amen. three grandchildren. We just, the Lord just blessed us about two weeks ago for another grandson. Amen. We thank God for three grandchildren. Amen. And, and so Miss Davis C. Brown uh, is a woman of God Amen. who loves God, who loves God's people. Amen. She will preach, can preach, and know how to preach. Amen. So I ask that you pray with her and pray for her, that the word that she has is a word that will encourage you, challenge you, and convict you. All right. Yes. All right. and, and Minister Brown, it's only one mandate that we want you to do and we want you to use the book. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I'm not talking about a magazine, but I'm talking about the Word of God. Yeah. Because we know that there's power in the Word of God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay? And there's deliverance in the Word of God. Yeah, yeah. So if she says something to step on your toes, just say, ouch. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. The Word of God is to convict you. Yeah. Amen. So we ask that you pray with her and pray for her as she brings forth the Word of God. After the next election, or after Scripture, the next election, the next force you heard, be none other than Minister A. C. Brown, the social minister of the 11 Oaks Baptist Church uh, in D. Whit, Virginia. Here you turn. Amen.
who reverences the Lord, a woman who respects the Lord, a woman who honors the Lord. She shall be praised. I would like to lift up for your hearing on today a portrait of godliness. Okay. okay. Or you can call it a portrait of a godly woman, but since we have been folk in the place, <laughs> a portrait of godliness. I hear you. Pastor Hill, in this passage of scripture, we find the portrait, um, Solomon paints for us the portrait of an ideal woman. Amen. One who he describes, if you go back and read the chapter in its entirety, one who is an excellent wife and mother. Mm -hmm. She's a manufacturer. Mm -hmm. She's an importer. Mm -hmm. She's a manager. Yeah, yeah. She's a realtor. Yeah. She's a farmer. <clears throat> she's a seamstress. Yeah. She's an upholsterer yeah. and a merchant. Yeah, right. Her ability are at the very least outstanding. Her achievements are amazing. Her family and community hold her in high regard. She is without doubt a portrait of what a godly woman should be. Amen. But here's the caveat, Pastor Brown. Her appearance is never mentioned no. because her attractiveness is based on her character. All right, say so. Say so. It is no surprise, ladies, that we live in a society where outer beauty is held in high regard. In fact, in the African American culture alone, did you know that we spend over a trillion dollars every year just on beauty and hair care products? Mm. In 2018, the black hair care industry brought in over two billion dollars alone. Yeah. We definitely don't have a problem when it comes to spending money on ourselves to make us look good on the outside. And while there is nothing wrong with keeping your appearance tight, your wig smoked, your bag and your shoes on point, the problem so. comes when you look great on the outside to strip you up with your Or care about what 
real godliness looks like. Yeah. 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 Amen. Yeah. And the first thing that you have to do in order to experience real godliness, you must first and foremost be kingdom connected. That's right. Yeah. 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 The woman that I just talked about, the woman that I described in Proverbs experienced great achievement because of her connectedness and reverence to God. Yeah, yes. I say so. You cannot, I cannot, none of us can live in this world doing worldly things and then try to live for God at the same time. Yeah. Yeah. It is true that our works do not save us. Yeah. Yeah. But because just because our works don't save us, that does not give us license to live any and every kind of way that the world tells us it's okay to do. So when you're kingdom connected, then you have everything you need to live for yeah. God. But here's the thing. Does your lifestyle reflect what you profess? Come on now. Your qualities, your values, your character, your words, your actions, those things that you in the dark. Those things when you take the mask off at night and no one else is looking around. Is it a direct reflection of what you believe in your heart? That's right. Godliness, my brothers and my sisters, is not just about being saved and coming to church. Mm -hmm. I'm so sorry to have to burst that bubble for you. <laughs> Godliness, I'm going to say it again just in case y'all didn't hear me. Godliness is not just about being saved and coming to church. Godliness is not about singing in the choir and when you all sound good this morning. Godliness is not about standing around the wall. Godliness doesn't even come from standing behind the sacred death. Godliness is born out of a relationship with God. as we study, as we pray, as we help each other with a sincere heart and seek to build each other up instead of tearing each other down. Godliness encourages. Godliness supports. Godliness elevates. Godliness lifts up. Godliness forgives. Godliness loves. Godliness shows kindness and mercy to others. Godliness speaks blessings Yeah. All of the things that she did to please God. Her husband's 
spoke well of her. Her children spoke well of yeah. her. Her community spoke well of her. Why? Because she lived to please God and not the flesh. Yeah. Amen. My God. We've been given everything we need to, to please God. Yeah. God has given us everything we need to fully trust in his word. Yeah. And we've been given everything we need to fully live for Christ. But it begins and ends with relationship. Yeah, yeah. You gotta be connected, yeah. and then you got you have already. Do you know that you have the power to lead a never godly life? Yeah. What kind of power? I'm not talking about Virginia power. I'm not, I'm not talking about Southside electric. Yeah. I'm not talking about the power that comes when you plug in to the electrical socket. But I'm talking about Holy Ghost power. Yeah, yeah. How do I know? Although you do look beautiful in peace. Right. 
when you realize what you've been given, you got to be productive for the kingdom. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You see, when you know what you have and you know the Holy Ghost is working in you, then you can accomplish everything that God has purposed in his word for you to do. Do you not know that you are valuable to the yeah, kingdom? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you not know that you have kingdom value? God did not make a mistake when he created you. But he created you with purpose. The Bible says you were created in his image and his likeness. Why? He gave you the resources that you need to accomplish spiritual things that you can't even imagine. Yeah. So my question to you this morning, my brothers and sisters, what are you producing for the kingdom? All right. Are you producing good works that glorify God and edify the church? Or are you producing works that edify and glorify you? Mm. Are you effective in kingdom building or are you tearing the kingdom down? Yeah. You see, here's the thing. God has given you everything you need. Yeah. But are you squandering your power like the prodigal son or are you increasing your power through study and prayer of God's word? We cannot produce if we do not understand what we're supposed to be producing. Yeah. And the only way to understand is to tap into the power of the Holy Ghost that dwells in you. You see, when you know and understand what God has given you, then your walk becomes greater. Yeah. When you know and understand what God has given you, your faith becomes greater. Your it. trust in God becomes yeah. Yeah, greater. Yeah. Your spiritual growth becomes greater. Your giving becomes greater. Hello, your giving becomes greater. Your knowledge of God becomes greater. Your praise becomes greater. Your worship becomes greater. Your life becomes greater. Because you know what God has placed in you and you understand that you have purpose. Yeah. Kingdom connected. Leading and building on God in Producing greatness for the kingdom. And here's the other part. You've been given the power to do all of these wonderful things just like the proverbial woman. But first and foremost, and I feel more, most importantly, you've been given the power to proclaim the good news of the gospel. All right, yeah, yeah, yeah. In verse 31, the woman is praised and rewarded for her work. The last time I looked at the New Testament, the Bible says that faith without works is what? Faith. Somebody studies their work. Have you ever asked yourself, and don't, don't answer, it's just, um, it's just a rhetorical question. How effective is my witness for God? Amen. My God. Yeah. 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 Have you ever considered that your works will speak for you? Did mm. y'all know that? Yeah. There's an old hymn of the church that says, May the work I have done speak for you. Yeah. In the time of the pandemic, and we're going toward the end of the pandemic, but we're not quite out of it yet. Yeah. But we've, been, we've seen the worst of it, I believe. Mm -hmm. But here's the thing about the pandemic. We've already seen that everybody, for whatever reason, whether it's real or made up, they're not coming back to the physical building. Right. And that's okay. Mm -hmm. That should have no effect on our ability to proclaim the good news of the gospel. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. Because the church is not these four walls, it's yes. a structure. The church is in us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you understand that you might be the only Bible that some people will ever read? That's right. Yeah. Like the woman of Proverbs, will others speak well of the work you're doing for the kingdom? Will others speak well of the godliness they see in you? The Bible says, let your light so shine yeah, yeah. before men, so that they might see your good works and glorify who? Your Father in heaven. How honorable it is that God is glorified when others see the kingdom yeah, work yeah. that you're doing and the godly life you're living. What a privilege it is to share how God has walked with you. Come on now. How what an honor it is to see yeah. how God came the midnight hour when no one else was around. How he has provided yeah, for you. Yeah. How he has comforted you in times 
of sorrow. Has God ever given anybody hope for tomorrow? Has he cut you from falling? Has he healed you inside in here? Has he held that sickness? Has he raised you up off of your bed of affliction? Has he delivered anyone in here? Has he
All of us have insurance that you pay a premium every month. And if you don't pay that premium, they'll cancel your insurance. But I want to tell you today that you got assurance that you don't have to pay anything for. God will give you salvation. He will save you if you just come. But then we'll know how to pay.
he popped up early to do it. So we And women who welcomed her, it was a man. And I may have turned it over to God. Amen. Let's give God a hand clap of praise.
because she got a mouth on her. <laughs> and I pray when you let the Lord use that mouth. Amen. Amen. Yeah. I was playing with you yesterday. I changed that gift for you. Let me know what you <laughs> So would you please come forward? Some of you, please. <laughs>
and I think we'll be fine. Uh, Sister Valerie, come on up. Here. <laughs> come up to the pool, please. <laughs> Amen. Amen. There are only three women that I've ever given flowers to. That's my, my mother, my daughter, and my wife. But then you're the fourth woman that I've ever given flowers to. And, uh, so, thank you, you know who it is. Yes, ma'am. Um, we have some cupcakes in the back. 
Okay, yeah, we have refreshments uh, uh, in the back, so we asked for some uh, cupcakes. Uh, we have some, uh, I think, some fruit things of that nature that we have in the back. We ask that you will come, come to the back and uh, and enjoy yourself and fellowship. Uh, let us all stand. We're going to ask uh, Reverend Minister uh, Graham to dismiss us in her own way. Thank you. 